My name is Greta Thunberg. I'm 16 years old. I come from Sweden and I want you to panic. We live in a strange world where the United Science tells us that we are about 11 years away from setting off an irreversible chain reaction way beyond human control that will probably be the end of our civilization as we know it. I don't know, I just know what is right. There is no hope. Where we think we can buy and build our way out of a crisis that has been created by buying and building stuff. We need to keep the fossil fuels in the ground and we need to focus on equity. This is all wrong. Then maybe we should change the system itself. People see you celebrities as gods. You influence billions of people. We need you. You can use your voice to raise awareness about this global crisis. You can help us wake up the leaders and let them know that our house is on fire. You all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? And we are running out of time. You said to us a moment ago, you want to push them against the wall. You are not mature enough to tell it like it is. To shame them, you said. Those who, who need shaming. <laughs> it actually has a lot of impact. People who have contributed the least to this crisis are the ones who are going to be affected the most. And yet you are stealing their future in front of their very eyes. I want you to act as if the house was on fire. You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. Change is coming, whether you like it or not. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. Around the year 2030, we will be in a position where we set off an irreversible chain reaction that will most likely lead to the end of our civilization as we know it. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. Deforestation of our great forests, toxic air pollution, loss of insects and wildlife. And if you choose to fail us, I say we will never forgive you. The acidification of our oceans. We will not let you get away with this. These are all disastrous trends being accelerated by a way of life that we, here in our financially fortunate part of the world, see as our right to simply carry on. And change is coming whether you like it or not. Our house is falling apart. Our leaders need to start acting accordingly. How dare you! Everyone and everything needs to change. How dare you? You need to listen to us. Everyone and everything has to change. Thank you. Hi. As a Swede, I'd just like to say sorry for Greta Thunberg. She does not represent the majority of us. The hype by the media have managed to attract countless idealistic boomers, bored millennials and traumatized children around the world to an apocalyptic climate cult. But this is not new. The foundation of the manipulation behind Greta Thunberg is old, a tested and proven method. It's just a new rapper, a new spokesperson. And one of the most insidious aspects is that Greta herself is being used. Sincere or not, I do believe she is sincere, but clearly misinformed and encouraged by the adults around her. She is a manufactured asset that have been constructed by the very elites she claims to be fighting. Stay with me and I'll present the top 10 reasons why Greta Thunberg is a fraud. Number one, Greta's rise to fame was not organic. Greta says in interviews that what got her started was watching climate documentaries in school. What she learned was that the world as we know it is going to end and we are on the brink of another mass extinction event due to man's exploitation of the earth and the adult leaders are doing nothing about this. This scared her so much that she decided to take action. So Greta launched a one girl school strike at the Swedish parliament on the morning of August 20th, 2018. 
PR man Ingmar Rentsog, founder of the environmental social media campaign We Don't Have Time, just by accident happened to be passing by that same day. So Rentsog took a picture of Greta, posted it on his personal Facebook page, tweeted it out from the official uh, Twitter account for the group. And by late afternoon, the newspaper Dagens Nyheter had Greta's story and face on its website. Then the story went international and viral. However, it turns out that uh, that story is a fairy tale. Thanks to investigative journalism, we've learned the following. Rentsog met Greta's mother, the uh, somewhat famous opera singer Malena Ehrmann, about three to four months before all of this got started. Rentsog, who was trained by Al Gore's Climate Reality Project, had shared a stage with Malena at the conference called Climate Parliament. Rentsog did not stumble across Greta's protest by accident. He had been informed a week earlier by climate activist Bo Turén who leads the Fossil Free Dalsland group in Sweden, who was searching for fresh green faces to, quote, get help from young people to increase the pace of the transition to a sustainable society, unquote. After Greta had won a second prize in an environmental op-ed writing competition run by the newspaper Svenska Dagbladet, Turén approached all of the winners of the writing contest with a proposal, a plan for a school strike modeled after the Parkland student walkouts after the shootings in Florida. Apparently no one but Greta was interested, so she is the one who got the gig. Former Vice President Al Gore, who famously pitched similar apocalyptic ideas about rising sea levels and runaway anthropogenic global warming about a decade ago, is not the only influential and powerful person that was around Rentsog and helped to shape his organization, We Don't Have Time. There are other people orbiting Greta, seeking to benefit politically and financially from her now world-famous campaign for climate justice. Uh, so hang on for this one here. Rentsog and his CEO David or David Ulsson have backgrounds in finance, not environmental activism. Rentsog is the uh, founder of Leica, an investment relations company, and Ulsson with, with Svenska Bustadsfonden, one of Sweden's biggest real estate funds, whose board Rentsog joined in June 2017. We don't have time's investors include Gustav Stenbeck, whose family controls Schinnevik, one of Sweden's largest investment corporations. In May 2018, Rentsog and Ulsson of We Don't Have Time became chairman and a board member of a think tank called Global Utmaning, Global Challenge. Its founder, Kristina Passion, is an heir to an industrial fortune. She is a career trade unionist and a social democrat politician, going back all the way to the golden age of uh, Olaf Palme of the Social Democratic Party. She is also an ex-deputy governor of Sweden's Central Bank and a New Ager who has uh, discussed her reincarnations and communications with the dead. Between 2014 and 2016, Passion served as Minister for the Future in the Social Democratic Government of Prime Minister Stefan Löfven. Petter Skogar, president of Sweden's biggest employers association, is on Global Challenges' 10-person board. So is Johan Lindholm, chairman of the Union of Construction Workers and member of the Social Democrats' executive board. So is Anders Wikman, the vice president of the Club of Rome, chair of the Environmental Objectives Council, and he was also invited in February 2018 to Bouturien's event that sought to organize youth mobilization that we discussed earlier. Now, the anti-growth Club of Rome that Wikman is vice president of is famous for its alarmist 1972 report, A Limit to Growth. And that became the cornerstone of the climate emergency campaign that now is beginning to pick up tremendous amount of speed. In December 2018, We Don't Have Time and Global Challenge launched the Club of Rome's latest vision of the apocalypse called the Climate Emergency Plan. Katarina Nustet Ringborg, another board member of Global Challenge, is the former CEO of Swedish Water, advisor at IEA, the International Energy Agency, and former vice president at Swedish Swiss energy giant ABB. Katarina Nuttingborg is also a member of green energy venture capital firm Sustainable Energy Angels. Its members are a who's who of the Swedish energy sector. Sustainable Energy Angels president and chair of the investment committee are ex-ABB personnel, and so are four of its 17 members. It's an incestuous circus of energy sector social democrats that are seeking to transform the political climate and to place themselves in a leading position as they hope the world begins to restructure its uh, energy needs. 
We are running out of time. Right now, carbon dioxide emissions are being released at a staggering rate. Climate change will soon be self-fulfilling and unstoppable. The ice in the Arctic will no longer deflect sunlight, and the Siberian tundra is melting while releasing enormous quantities of methane gas into the atmosphere. We cannot turn the clock back. We are growing closer at an unprecedented speed to the point of no return. But there is still time to stop the emissions. So why do we not introduce a carbon dioxide tax now? Why is it we are not shifting to 100% renewable energies? How is it that nothing is being done? We have a solution. Right now, as we speak, we are building a social network, an arena where you and millions of people around the world will be able to watch who is really doing something to put an end to the climate crisis. An arena where you can look into what your politicians and business leaders are doing about climate change. Do they in fact take it seriously? Are they doing their job? Love Bomb, the ones in power that are actively looking for solutions and Climate Bomb, the ones that must do more. Nobody likes a bad rating. Nobody wants to be held accountable for the climate crisis. When the pressure is felt by the people in power, they will no longer be able to deny, mislead, or hide. They will have to change their ways. This is a time when together we can solve this crisis, a time of great change. We are working round the clock to create this social network. But you don't have to wait for us. At WeDon'tHaveTime.org, you can already send climate bombs, love bombs, and messages to chosen world leaders through social media. Remember, together we have the power, but we are running out of time. In January 2019, Rentsog and We Don't Have Time used Greta's face and story in a promotional material for a new venture they had. Rentsog claimed that the family knew about this, but Greta and her parents insisted that they did not. Consequently, they announced that their association with Rentsog was, was over. Still, we Don't Have Time retweets Greta as if nothing has changed at all. Greta's new press agent, Daniel Donner, works from the office of a Brussels lobby group, the European Climate Foundation. Now, one of Greta Thunberg's advisors is climate change professor Kevin Anderson, who claims that uh, he only helps to, quote, discuss Greta's ideas and, quote, correct her manuscripts. But uh, Club of Rome vice president Anders Wikman has said, quote, I know that Andersson has given her a lot of advice in terms of substance, unquote. Number two, Tumba is being exploited and taken advantage of. Now, the poor girl has Asperger's and selective autism and obsessive compulsive disorder. In one interview, she clarified how other normal kids would feel sad after watching climate alarmist propaganda films in school. But once it was recess, you know, the kids would uh, return to other things and move on with their lives. Greta, however, because of her condition, could not let it go. She obsessed about the traumatizing message of uh, drowning polar bears and melting ice caps until she decided to start a school strike. She had to do something. It's unclear if she made all of her decisions herself at this stage or if she was coached and aided by people orbiting her. Uh, but her parents, who are both famous celebrities in Sweden, did and definitely still do coach her. But regardless, Geta's obsessive nature with her particular condition have not been treated. She has not been getting help for it or therapy to try to get her away from obsessing about climate doomsday material. It has instead been exploited and encouraged even by the grown-ups around her, particularly her parents. Her unhealthy obsession is being used to drive home a message that fulfills specific political and financial goals. A global wealth redistribution and massive reshuffles in the developed world's energy sector are two very clear agendas being driven alongside a program of social engineering and deindustrialization proposals for the West. Ageta is clearly not doing well. She has mentioned many times that it's difficult for her with all the attention. She is overwhelmed with the visibly strong reactions to crowds like at the speech she did after arriving in uh, New York. Let's not wait any longer, let's do it now. Yes. So if people cared about Greta, they would not let her go on thinking that the world is going to end in 12 years. That is cruel and irresponsible. But where it goes from just abuse of one child is when the mass media is starting to sell the same message of doom to the rest of the world, trying to create a 
global epidemic of children and adults that are hysterically believing that if we don't have a radical restructuring of the industrial, financial and social order, now we are all going to die. The elites talk about how dangerous the uh, provable and ongoing population replacement is. For example, that people, if they think that this is real, they would uh, lash out, they would maybe uh, turn to violence because of frustration. Well, do you think that they are creating radicals, any new Ted Kaczynskis, with the kind of doomsday climate alarmist material that they're presenting to, uh, to everybody? I mean, the El Paso shooter did mention uh, that there are limits to growth and that there's uh, depletion, uh, resource competition and these kinds of things. What responsibility will the establishment take once someone finally loses it after being told that leaders in influential positions intentionally harm the environment and refuse to do anything to stop the end of the world? The difference between these two different scenarios is that one of these ideas is getting worldwide airplay in the media. The other one is being denied and even censored. Even independent voices on, on YouTube and other social media are not even allowed to repeat quotes and, and play clips from world leaders and, and important powerful individuals that are actually talking about that this is the goal and that, that this is what they're doing. If people around Greta, her parents, cared about her, they would comfort her and try to get her to lead a at least slightly more normal life by letting her be a, a teenager instead of encouraging an apocalyptic delusion which is being used by a cunning force behind the scenes. A very strong superstition reinforced by an obsessive conviction is being used intentionally to fuel a desperate emotional state in order to sell a message. The media just point their cameras at, at, at the circus and let the emotions, the guilt and the shame and the empathy do the rest of the work. Adults should dispel children's worst fears, be a stable force in the world for them. Even if it isn't true, teenagers need to know that there are adults in the world with a spine that can comfort, protect and lead by example. Change things, they can make things better. Not lead kids into thinking that we have no future and that the survival of civilization and possibly even our species is in the hands of an autistic 16 year old girl. I don't think creating hysterical kids is a very good thing for their mental state or for our future. But, you know, we are the bad guys for, for pointing that out. We should just let these despicable adults with ulterior political and economic motives push propaganda on kids uh, who think they are going to uh, die in about a decade or so. I'll say this one more time. This is being done so that those kids growing up will voluntarily change their ways of living, radical transformation, while the elites telling you to do all this will accumulate more power, more wealth and more control. That's how this goes. Climate hysteria movement is not about science. If it were about science, it would be led by scientists rather than by politicians and a mentally ill Swedish child who is being exploited by her parents and by the international left. You. So what you're seeing here is a political movement and a religious movement. And and it's uh, fulfilling uh, religious and political goals of the left, but it isn't doing very much for science. You're a grown man and you're attacking a child. Shame on you. She's trying I'm to not, do I'm what she thinks the left thinks for right. And by the way, now right, relax, skinny boy. I got this, okay? You're attacking a child. You're a grown man. Have some coup. I'm not. I'm attacking okay, the left for exploiting television. a mentally I, maybe ill on, child. Maybe on, your, maybe on your podcast, you get away and say whatever you want because nobody's listening. You're on national television. Be a grown up when you're talking about children. She's trying to save the planet because your president doesn't believe in climate change and kids need to take to the streets to worry about their future. You are despicable for talking to her about her like that. And you should apologize on national television right now. I think the, the international left and her parents who are exploiting a girl with many mental illnesses. You called her, her mentally Ill. Mental Take it back now. She is Take mentally Ill. Take it back now. She is mentally Ill. She has Take autism. It back she now. has obsessive compulsive disorder. She has selective you mutism. Are, she had you depression. You are despicable. Her mother wrote so Michael Knowles' comments here on Fox spurred them to officially apologize to Greta Thunberg and her parents. But the question is, is it true? Does she have uh, mental uh, disadvantages? I have... Asperger's, I'm on the autism spectrum, so I don't really care about social codes yeah. in that way. <laughs> in fact, you called your Asperger's, you called it a superpower, a gift. To have some kind of neurotypical diagnosis and to be neurodiverse. Mm -hmm. And um, because, because that makes you different, that makes you think differently. Yeah. And especially 
in such a big crisis like this when we need to think outside the box and who aren't like everyone else. Without my diagnosis, I would this wouldn't have been possible because then I would have been just like everyone else and kept on going like everyone else and and not not think about this too much. Now I I overthink everything and I I can't just let things go things that I care about and worry about are stuck in my head. So Asperger's is technically no longer a diagnosis on its own. It's now part of a broader category called Autism Spectrum Disorder, ASD. This group of related mental health issues shares some symptoms. Even so, lots of people still use the term Asperger's. So Asperger's syndrome is a developmental disorder characterized by significant difficulties in social interaction and nonverbal communication, along with restricted and repetitive patterns of behavior and interests. It's a disorder and it's considered to be a deviation from the normal state of, uh, of, of anybody. So yes, it is a disability. The conclusion therefore is that the elites are exploiting a sick child for gain. Number three, Greta is not a dissident or an enemy of the system. If she was, she would not be promoted by the system that she supposedly is fighting. If the action and unspoken direct changes that she is proposing was a real danger to the elites that she actually serves, she would not be invited to speak at high-profile international events like the World Bank Conference in Davos, Switzerland, the United Nations Climate Summit, or get to meet with world leaders and religious leaders, ex-presidents. It is very good to see you again. Very good to see you. Thank you so much for stopping by to say hello. Thank you for having me. Here. Of course. Well, you're changing the world. You and me were a team, huh? Yes. And celebrities for all these photo shoots. If she was an enemy of the elites in a way that they have led people to believe, they would not invite her. They would not put her on stage and then applaud when she says that she's coming after you or, or we're going to we're watching you. The eyes of all future generations are upon you. And if you choose to fail us, we will never forgive you. We will not let you get away with this. And change is coming whether you like it or not. How dare you? Kind of almost veiled threats against the power establishment. If you think these people, these globalists and elites would invite a person that actually would expose their system and their methods and what they do and put them to shame, put them in their place and address the real concerns that people actually have, well, then you have no idea about the true nature of these people and these elites. You are sadly very, very naive. And if you think they would feed you something that they would not benefit from in the end, you have to rethink the situation, learn about the tactics of the people that have declared us an enemy, who they seek to subjugate and control with propaganda like this. No, instead they give Greta awards and prizes because it benefits the same old agenda of financial control through wealth redistribution campaigns. They won't redistribute their own money though, but they will your money, don't worry. They will do back-end deals with companies and slated to benefit from the new Green Deal economy in order to become even wealthier and consolidate even more power into fewer and fewer hands. They basically want us back to a feudal system and this climate oracle, this profit, is a way to sell you a superstition with raw emotions and frustrations of a child. They do this so that the message will bypass your rational modalities. It's all manipulation. Number four, she is getting an extraordinary amount of press and global media attention. TV news shows, newspapers, magazines, everyone wants to see and be seen with uh, Greta Thunberg. She is the elite's person of choice at the moment, and she is being used because it serves a larger agenda. She's on the cover of GQ, Time magazine, and many, many more publications. The mainstream fake news are pushing and promoting Greta and her message of radical atheist end times prophecy because it serves a purpose. This is a new religion. And the synagogue of climate change has a distinct apocalyptic message. Repent or you will die. The imams and the rabbis of any cult have always used supposed wacky prophets to drive fear into the masses by encouraging superstition, not dispelling it. That never has happened. Like any cult, obedience is expected and demanded. And those who spread its message are usually very much rewarded, while critics, apostates and kafirs are targeted, shamed and reprimanded by an army of unquestioning believers. Number five, she has handlers. 
Her parents have always been a big part in encouraging Greta's activism. They have been weaving their own political messages into the direction that Greta had been nudged over the years. Coincidentally, shortly after Greta's first school strike, Malena's memoir called Theme from the Heart, written with husband Svante Thunberg and their daughters Greta and Beata, was released and it's now being translated into all of the world's languages. Make sure to get your copy. Ingmar Ensog's PR skills and connections with the financial and energy sector in Sweden and the international connections he had was vital into helping to push her into uh, instant fame in Sweden. After the right timing with the media, she was then launched onto the world stage. Since the collapse of the relationship with Ingmar Rensog, others have showed up, like Louise Marie Neubauer, a 24-year-old leftist and Green Party poster child from Germany, who sunk her claws into Greta when they met at the UN Climate Conference in Poland in December 2018 and made Greta her political protege. Neubauer started a branch of school strike for climate in Germany, and this has since gone international. Many photos and videos have been taken where you can see Greta with her handler, Luisa Marie. Neubauer is an important interface to a wealthy, powerful globalist because she is a member of the One Foundation, which is managed and funded by a Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and receiving money from a Bono of U2 and George Soros, to name a few. Now let me ask you a question. Do you really think that Greta Thunberg writes all of her own material? We are hardly getting any information in the press about who she is traveling with, who is writing her speeches, or does she actually write these herself? Who assists her with word choice, uh, sentence composition, and the English language overall? We are expected to believe that she is traveling around the world alone, organizing her own travel itinerary, handling communication with the largest media companies in the world, setting up interviews, going to events, attending conferences, uh, even picking her own outfits and navigating around the New York City subway system all alone, walking by foot to the CBS studios on her own. They actually <laughs> said this in an interview with her. And you walked here. We should tell people she walked here this morning. <laughs> All right. Why is there no information about the team behind her? Now, it seems like the Neubauer girl did not follow her to New York. But we do know that her father, Svante, traveled with her uh, on the ex-Rothschild-owned super yacht, now named Malizia 2, to New York. We found this out because there was uh, a lot of attention on her supposed carbon neutral boat trip to New York. However, a spokesman for German rounded the world sailor Boris Hermann, the yacht's co-skipper, told Berlin newspaper Taz that several people would fly into New York to help take the yacht back to, uh, to Europe. The co-skipper himself will return by plane. The paper estimates that, in fact, Thunberg's boat trip would end up being more polluting than if she and her companions had just taken flights to New York themselves. It's all appearances, this is all for show. It's stunts designed to create media buzz and attention. Number six, boomers, zoomers, and millennials think that you're attacking a little girl when you criticize her radical message. Yes, this is uh, really the rebuttal. Question her conclusions about climate change and the people around her, and you are an afraid and insecure male that uh, can't handle a little girl putting you in your place. The reaction to backlash and defense kicking in is the very reason why the marketing forces behind Greta Thunberg selected a now 16-year-old autistic girl that essentially looks like she's 12 as their spokesperson, because most people will unthinkingly just see what is right in front of their eyes. And they will connect emotionally with the messenger. Whatever the message is, it will be swallowed wholesale, hook, line and sinker. And most people will feel sorry for Greta. Or they feel sad when they see her act out her emotions and frustrations mixed with her kind of odd autistic social behavior. So all of this is obviously very smart. I mean, they emotionally deliver uh, messages and of course semi-well-crafted scripts. Some of the lines she has is, is uh, effectful. I, I see that. And they place her on, on a stage at an important event in front of cameras with millions of viewers. And so people who have that uh, special sense of social justice will defend her and her message. As a, as a kind of a reflex, really, when they see uh, old, uh, white and angry, bitter uh, old men, white supremacists, they, they question her or put her down or say something like, oh, just just relax, little girl, or, uh, you know, it, it's not as bad as you think it is, etc. This actually happened with Trump, even after he hilariously said very positive things about her 
uh, people were uh, were freaking out. Number seven, her family ties back in Sweden. So Malena Ehrman, the mother, is a kind of a famous opera singer. She has essentially quit her uh, very vibrant career as a somewhat manly looking mezzo soprano to help pimp out her daughter. Her father, Svante Thunberg, is a author, producer, and actor. Her uh, younger sister, Beata, lives with ADHD, Asperger's syndrome, and OCD. She is uh, also prone to sudden outbursts of anger during which she screams obscenities at her mother. Despite this, she frequently performs in front of audiences and often choreographs her performances as well. The theatrical chops in the Thunberg family goes far past Thunberg's parents and her sister. Her paternal grandfather is a famous Swedish actor and director named Olof Thunberg. He was in TV and has been directing movies in Sweden. Greta Thunberg was actually nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize in March. Uh, but if she wins the prize, she won't be the first in her family to do so. She has a distant relative, Svante Arrhenius, a winner of the now useless and discredited Nobel Prize, especially since uh, Obama, who expanded the wars in uh, Afghanistan, Syria, the Middle East, etc., was actually given one of these uh, useless Nobel Peace Prizes. Now, Arrhenius got his prize for chemistry, I believe, but uh, regardless, the Nobel Committee is essentially a joke at this uh, point. And interestingly, uh, Arrhenius was also an early voice in the climate change field. So all of this means that uh, Greta definitely knows how to act, it's in her blood, and she certainly utilizes some of this, especially at the most recent uh, delivered speech that she passionately did at the UN, and I must say, it did feel a bit uh, put on. Now notice Antonio Guterres in these shots as well. Uh, he is the Secretary General of the UN. He smirked his way through the entire speech, it seems like. No applause, no real reactions. Guterres, interestingly, was the Prime Minister of Portugal for seven years. He was also the Secretary General of the Socialist Party from 92 to 2002. And he served as a President of the Socialist International from 1999 to 2005. Now, this is very important to give you an idea of what the UN is actually about. Socialist International is essentially a communist gateway organization that unites all democratic socialist parties around the world. Now he is the head of the UN. This is a key to understanding the intent of the organization and where they seek to take things politically. And so I believe it's the duty of all decision makers in the world not only to listen to the voice of young people and to do what they ask us to do, but also to support them in their own action for climate action around the world. Thank you very much to all of you. Number eight, Boomer. Please, she's not a Nazi, okay? So despite Boomer logic, uh, Cox and Conservatards' misconceptions, no, she is not a member of the National Socialist Germans Workers' Party, or used by them in any capacity. Despite hacks like uh, Dinesh D'Souza, who seems to think that as soon as you have a Nordic uh, person ends up in the limelight to deliver any message, you can accuse them of Nazism and, and you'll win. QAnon maggotards think that uh, just because Sweden once had a sound policy of uh, population fitness and desired to improve the general mental and physical health of the population. Greta Thunberg, as a Swedish girl with braids, must be some kind of promoter of a Swedish democratic socialist eugenics plot to abort the rest of the world. I do believe that if this actually was the agenda, they wouldn't pick a kind of an odd-looking 16-year-old girl with Asperger's to be a spokesperson for a Nordic eugenics revival in, in the current year. Many times you do see deranged leftists, bears to be repeated, who desperately are attempting to charge anything or anyone that they don't understand or agree with as Nazis. But the wacky right of the kosher certified opposition to this madness is seemingly no better, as the bottom scraping boomers seem to think that shouting Nazi louder than their communist enemies is somehow going to put them on a winning course. Just stop. You're embarrassing yourself. Especially when there is direct, available evidence and information that her parents are Antifa supporting watermelons. Green on the outside, red on the inside. Now, although some of these boomers are correct that children are being used by power grabbers of any flavor to uh, sell an agenda, that happens quite often, but we only have to look at previous examples that these same people and organizations used before. In fact, the conference that started essentially all of the climate hysteria was the UN Earth Summit, uh, the Earth Climate Summit in Rio de Janeiro in 1992. 
and they featured a young girl, Severin Cullis Suzuki, around the same age as Greta. Check this out. I'm Severin Suzuki, speaking for ECHO, the Environmental Children's Organization. We're a group of 12 and 13 year olds trying to make a difference. You adults, you must change your ways. I have no hidden agenda. I am fighting for my future. I am here to speak for all generations to come. I am afraid to go out in the sun now because of the holes in our ozone. I am afraid to breathe the air and yet we act as if we have all the time we want. I am only a child yet I know we are all in this together and should act as one single world towards one single goal. <laughs> <laughs> Parents should be able to comfort their children by saying, everything's going to be all right. It's not the end of the world. But I don't think you can say that to us anymore. What you do makes me cry at night. You grown-ups say you love us, but I challenge you, please, make your actions reflect your words. Thank you. There are other girls. Agent represented aspiring actresses, in fact, that seem to uh, regularly get in front of the cameras at climate events and showing off some of their acting skills, like uh, Estelle Rene, for example. And I just, I'm so concerned with the fact that if they're not going to change anything, then what's going to happen to humankind? What's going to happen to our, what's going to happen to the whole world? If if no one does anything. So the United Nations climate crisis clamor was first kicked off at the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro, a symbolic event that laid the groundwork for something completely new, a new tool in the arsenal for the globalists of environmental alarmism. The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, the opening remarks to this was made by FCC's Environment Program Executive Director Maurice Strong a highly decorated Canadian oil and mineral businessman who served as Under Secretary General of the United Nations. Now, he was the person who organized the first UN Earth Climate Summit, where he expressed the underlying priority of these events very candidly. Quote, We may get to the point where the only way of saving the world will be for industrialized civilization to collapse. Isn't it our responsibility to bring this about? Number nine, it's an apocalyptic death cult. Now this is turning into a strange apocalyptic cult that's absorbing kids from all around the world. How do you think our kids feel emotionally after being told that the adults are doing nothing while scientists all agree that the earth will hit an irreversible runaway global warming event sometime in little over a decade? This is damaging kids psychologically. This is horrific child abuse. It's less of a religion and more of a death cult. And even the symbols they use points us in this direction. At the Earth Summit in Rio in 1992, there was an opening ritual where world leaders put soil from 26 countries into a huge hourglass. Now, the Baha'i faith called it a symbol of peace. And I guess if you uh, use the terms as in uh, rest in peace or the, the final peace, it, it, it makes sense, sure. But this ugly, modern art of kind of reverse stacked pyramids on top of each other still stands in Rio today. It's the same symbol that the Extinction Rebellion uses. It's an hourglass, just like the name of the paper that they will uh, give to you for free. This is actually a symbol, if you go back to Roman times, that was associated with Saturn, or Cronus, as the Greeks called it, from where we get the term chronometer, time. It's time measurement. Saturn is the timekeeper. He lets you know when your time is up. He is appropriately also the god who ate his own children. And just like those today who are trying to be our gods, seem to be feeding off of the kids and indoctrinating them with an unhealthy obsession with death. Now the photos that I've seen from some of the Extinction Rebellion events is that the uh, crowds there used an X. They cross their arms as it produces the uh, notable shape of the hourglass. I know that this gets kind of a bit more esoteric here, but just like the pharaohs in their sarcophagus had their arms placed in an X, there seems to be a fascination with the death for these new cults that are popping up. The Extinction Rebellion regularly do die-ins at various locations in the West as well, where they lay down and play dead. 
There are a few American branches of these types of groups, and one is the Youth Climate Strike, whose founder, coincidentally, is Ilhan Omar's 16-year-old daughter, Isra Hirzi. Another one is called This Is Zero Hour, same theme, about the lack of time. Greta also uses the slogan, Our House Is On Fire, or Our House Is Burning. I am here to say, our house is on fire. And this comes up a lot. It's, it's burning down. We, we need to act now. Don't think. There's no time. This is zero hour. We don't have time. We don't have time to speculate. We don't have time is absolutely correct. As we know, we don't have time. There's no more time. Yes, we don't have time. We use the hashtag. We don't have time. We don't have much time. We don't have time to wait. Change now. No thinking rationally about this. No slowing down. Just do what we tell you to do now, or you are going to die. Number 10, the obfuscation of real environmental damage. Now, by giving attention to a platform, to a child that demands swift radical action immediately, based on science that there is counter to the uh, popular beliefs of the masses, not a consensus on. There are many dissenting scientists and critics that have been silenced over the years, removed from their positions, or attacked, smeared, and discredited for speaking out with different research and different finds. No one is allowed to be thinking differently about this. Just look at how ClimateGate from 2010 have been memory hold. Emails that showed how the Climate Research Unit at the East Anglia University in the UK had fudged the numbers. This was just a small group of scientists who have for years been the most influential in driving the worldwide alarm over global warming. And this group was a key component in helping to produce the data that ended up informing the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, on their alarmist reports. And this is the very same report that Greta and all these other people are now referencing as proof for why we all need to change or we are going to die. The global temperature degree increases that they are giving us, telling us, are in fact based on fraudulent data. And this was exposed and leaked back in 2010. Yet the propaganda endures, the machine continues. Just a few days ago, September 23rd, a group of scientists and professionals in climate and related fields sent a letter to the United Nations declaring that, quote, there is no climate emergency. The general circulation models of climate on which international policy is at present founded are unfit for their purpose. Continues, quote, therefore it is cruel as well as imprudent to advocate the squandering of trillions of dollars on the basis of results from such immature models, unquote. The letter is signed by a number of prominent scientists and professionals from related fields, including atmospheric physicist Richard Lindzen and applied geology professor Alberto Prestininzi. The effort is led by Professor Gus Berkhout, a Dutch engineer who served as professor of acoustics, geophysics and innovation management at Delft University of Technology. Berkhout plans to release the full list of 500 signatories in Oslo on October 18th. The letter states that current climate policies undermine the economic system and put lives at risk by denying countries affordable energy. Another quote from the letter. We urge you to follow a climate policy based on sound science, realistic economics and genuine concern for those harmed by costly but unnecessary attempts at mitigation." Unquote. So there are scientists that have differing opinions and they all don't agree. But there is a real issue with pollution. There are real problems, especially as we are reaching carrying capacity of the earth. But the solutions the elites are offering us now are not going to solve any of those issues. The countries doing most of the polluting are not being targeted in the same way that the West is, who's already doing a lot to mitigate these things. But plastic in the ocean, dangerous and altering chemicals, medications and other poisons are being dumped in the water supply, in the oceans. It's affecting humans and all wildlife in very strange ways. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay! Oh, this is actually real. People laugh at this, but it's actually real. So what is the solution that they are offering us right now? Number one. Stop eating meat, start eating bugs. This is very, very big right now. The bug eating trend is going to be pushed on the West. Just wait and you'll see. Number two, stop traveling. Number three, pay more taxes, fees, and carbon offset charges. Number four, change your um, light bulbs. Number five, the West, bring in more migrants because, well, this will somehow, uh, somehow help. And of course, number six, a lot more feudalistic socialism. That is going to fix all of our problems. Give us all the power 
and the money, and we'll save you. Share this video with everyone you know. Make sure that you like and comment if you're watching on YouTube to help to drive up the algorithm. Thank you for that. If you're watching on RedEyesMembers.com, thank you so much for being a member. We can't do videos like this without you. So your membership and your subscription is key to what we're doing. Thank you so much again. Also, of course, make sure you watch RedEyes.tv and RedEyesMembers.com as we will continue to cover Greta Thunberg and the machine, the propaganda machine around her. If you like what we do, watch more of our content at RedEyesMembers.com. Sign up for a membership, donate, or get one of our top tier comfy organic t-shirts at RedEyes.tv forward slash store. Thank you so much for watching.